Hi, welcome. We're at the studio of Guillermo Cuellar. Let's come on with me. Guillermo! Hey. It's good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Well, I, for my first contact with clay was in college for freshman year and I, was, I had to do a humanities requirement of, you know, art, liberal art college. And I just loved it from the first moment I, I tried messing around with clay. And it wasn't that I was very good at it, I was not. It's like learning throwing on a wheel. And really what I like was throwing on you. I almost everything that I do is on the wheel. There's something really kind of wonderful about the way the clay responds and you know quickly takes it on a shape and and you can make uh, a number of pieces on the wheel that you know and I, that you couldn't make if you were making them by hand. I mean, some people make things by hand very well, quickly, but uh, I think a wheel is sort of, it's a machine with, which allows you to work more quickly, but still there's very much a handmade quality to the result. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I've always really been into food, and, uh, and most of my pots are about food, so and I really like that quality. I like the fact that pots are a focal point for community in one way or another. You know, they bring a family together, a group of friends together uh, over this object. When I sit down to make pots, I don't, I don't often think I'm going to make an art piece and I want it to look like this. I'm more often thinking about how's this pot going to interact with people? How's it going to integrate itself into people's lives? What effect, you know? And uh, so it's really important to me to, to make pots that are really comfortable to use. You know, that feel good in your hands, that have comfortable handles, that, that, that work well. And I usually make things in series, so I make, I make several. And I start out, or I probably make 30 of these cups in, in a row. And I start out with a certain idea, but when I end up, I realize I'm not making the same form that I started out with. You know, it, it relates somehow and it's similar and everything, but each one kind of responds to the one before. You know, you start to, you start to look, try to look in and see and try to get a flashlight and see what it, might have come out like you you set things up and you have an intention but you don't really know so it's that's wonderful you know but you get you get that kind of surprise yeah. once things become too predictable then it's just not really that much fun anymore it just becomes kind of a job you know the first person I think of is Warren McKenzie who um, I met when I was just starting out learning to trying to make a living making pots and failing miserably. At the time I was in school, um, I, I, I wanted to make a certain kind of pots. Uh, pots that were, you know, inspired on old, old pots, traditional pots, European and some Asian pots. And, and uh, the idea of um, pots that, that were primarily functional, but obviously with a great concern for uh, for aesthetics or form and, and trying to make beautiful pots very, and useful pots and uh, after I left school I spent a lot of time trying to decide whether or not I was going to become a potter and I had some other jobs and did some other things. It was kind of felt like I was going against the current to be a potter because it wasn't really an acceptable choice within my cultural context and family and stuff. 
Uh, and during that time, I, uh, some of these older potters were dying off. And I was, felt like I was losing that opportunity to connect with that long historical sweep of pottery tradition. And Warren appeared, uh, just came to Venezuela to teach a work workshop, and he, I saw him immediately as a person that was a window into that world for, for me. And fortunately, um, over time I've had the opportunity to work with him off and on, never as an apprentice or a student, but I have been able to be in his studio. So, he's been a very important mentor to me.